Hello, and welcome to Godly Play at Church of the Incarnation in Manhattan. Today, we are going to talk about a mystery. I'm pretty sure you might remember the other two big mysteries we talk about, Christmas and Easter. But this is another one an exciting one. So let's get started and say our godly play prayer. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest. May our godly play be blessed. Amen. This is the mystery of Pentecost. The, it looks like it could be a parable, but it's not not exactly like a parable, but it's red. It's not gold. Let's see, uh, let's see what is there. Yeah, there are some things to tell a story, but there's nothing to help us get ready. I guess all we can do then is begin. There was once a tower a great tower. Everyone working on the tower spoke the same language and worked together. But as the tower grew taller and taller, they began to talk in different ways. The tower came close to God, but the people forgot why they were building it. They grew so proud of themselves that they began to think they were greater builders than God. Each group thought it was better than any of the others. A huge noise replaced their talking. It made no sense. Everyone was babbling. The tower fell down, so it was called the Tower of Babel. The language of the people of the earth was shattered and broke into splinters. Each one was beautiful, but it was broken. Thousands of years passed. Then Jesus died on the cross, but somehow he was still with the people around him as he is with us. They kept seeing him and they couldn't let him go. Then one day, something amazing happened. The disciples were in Jerusalem. Here they are. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the Less, Simon, and Jude. There are only 11 disciples because Judas had already killed himself. Jesus took them outside of Jerusalem to a mountain called Olivet, as far as Bethany. make room for everybody in the circle. Jesus then went up and soon the Holy Spirit would come down.
the eleven disciples went back into the city. They were full of joy and went to the temple to pray. Then they went to the upper room and, with God's help, decided that Matthias could take Judas's place. On Sunday, the twelve were together again. Suddenly, there was a sound like a mighty wind rushing in to be with them. It was the Holy Spirit. They became so full of its power that they seemed to be on fire. Their tongues burned in their mouths. They were so excited that people wondered what was going on. When the disciples went out on the street, there were people there from many different countries. They spoke many different languages. Everyone could see that the twelve had come close to God and God had come close to them in a new way. It no longer mattered that they spoke different languages. The disciples had become apostles. They went out into all the world to tell this story. Ever since, Pentecost has been celebrated to remember that day. Now, I wonder what part of this story you like best. I wonder what the most important part could be. I wonder where you are in the story? What part of the story is about you? I wonder if we can leave out any part of the story and still have all the story we need. I wonder if you have ever come close to something like this. I wonder if there's anything in our church that reminds you of this. These are the apostles who were disciples. These are the walls of Jerusalem. Red is the color of Pentecost. Thank you so much for joining with me today. And let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.